Thank you, Nikad, and thank you, Mike, for that lovely introduction. Um, let me go on this side. Does everybody want to sit down? Want to sit down in front right there? Thank you. I love photographing people. How many of you guys like photographing people? I started out photographing kids. Many, not very many people know that. Baby pictures. But I graduated and ended up photographing uh, famous people, celebrities, uh, regular people, politicians. So I kind of do it all. I just love connecting with people, making iconic portraits, just having a good time and creating an atmosphere for people to feel good at, within. This is one of my first photographs taken of uh, Lauren Hill. Let me stand on this side, I'm getting used to this. This is my first time speaking for Nikon. Um, this is Lauren Hill. We shot this back in around 1999. I want to start off with an older picture to show you where I came from. And she was such an iconic individual. This image really put me on the map in New York City. It was this image. But very, very few people understand what happened behind this image. This is, I shot maybe 30 rolls of film, some 4x5 film, and this is, the lab messed up my film, and this is one of the only photographs that actually came out. So, and it's one of the best photographs of the session. So I always like to start off by saying, just do your best, things happen, but sometimes you make magic, even when disaster happens within photography. Young image of Beyonce. Janelle Monet. I love play I love playing with color. I love balloons. I really just like creating something that's statuesque, something that people can remember when they look at the photograph. Here's another one of Janelle. This is a sunset overlooking Malibu. Ava DuVernay. Cover Essence. Will Smith. Jamiroquai. How many people know Jamiroquai? That was one of my favorite bands. So when I got to photograph him, I was really excited. I did this for free. I just had an opportunity. He was in Venice, and I said, come to my studio. And he came in, and he had this great graphite headdress, and we just played around in the studio for a few hours. Benicio Del Toro. This is Willie Nelson. I was uh, shooting in South Carolina on a movie set. I was, I was actually there to do a movie poster, and I was just doing a location scout the day before. And my editor came up to me and she said, Kwaku, we have to get a picture of Willie Nelson right now. He's going to leave right now. And I had one camera on me. And I had one roll of film, my personal camera. And I said, oh my god, what am I going to do? I'm on set. So I took him in front of uh, this background, like a silk. And I made this as well. And I only had one minute to photograph him. He wanted to get out of there. And we created this. Jimmy Fox. I think the main thing is, I want you guys to know that photography is to be pleasurable. It should be something that we love, something that we do. When you're photographing people, if you want to get the best out of people, it's really important to just show your inspiration, your love for it, and your craftsmanship. And I think that translates into better photographs. Kanye West was a cover of Time magazine. This is uh, Andy Irons. This is uh, a year before he passed away. I was in Hawaii photographing him and Kelly Slater for Pipeline for the uh, Pipeline competition for New York Times Magazine. And this is one of my favorite photographs of him. I love Hawaii, so it's always had something, a connection there for me. Kim Kardashian. And sometimes we get to run across people or bump into people like Maya Angelou, and you get to photograph her. And uh, we had a friendship, it was great. And this is in her house, and she loves drinking mint jubilee. That's her thing. She loves that. And, uh, just hanging out, taking a photograph. Muhammad Ali. This is an older picture of Heath Ledger, one of my favorite photographs. I met him on a film set in Morocco and uh, came back to LA. We connected and started shooting magazine covers with him. Emmanuel Shriki. Queen Latifah, the queen. I have a great story behind this image because when I first photographed Queen Latifah, it was for Vibe magazine in 1997. And it was right, it was with my first big photo shoot. And she actually walked off 
of set because I wasn't paying attention to her during the shoot. And I was like, oh my god, I lost my, sh my shot, my chance. I got the shot. I may have two or three frames. But then 15 years later, I'm photographing her many times, and she doesn't even remember that. So I never mention it. But to me, I always, every time I see her, I'm like, I have to. I'll tell her one day. Uh, this is in Mississippi. I call this uh, juke joint. This is called Mississippi Walking. This is not a celebrity photograph, but this is one of my most iconic photographs. I sell this image many times over. For some reason, a lot of people connect with this. We were doing a fashion story in uh, Clarksdale, Mississippi. And um, this is one image from that fashion story that I guess I will, will be rem remembered by, one of them. Forrest Whitaker. I love playing with light and shadows. Mary J. Don Cheadle. Rachel McAdams. I shot this for Audible. I do a lot of CD covers and a lot of uh, movie posters, so. Robert Downey Jr. Just having fun with him. This is like the setup. We had him in his pajamas originally. Let me use this laser. We had him in the pajamas originally. That was one of our concepts. And then we ended up doing this in his yard, which I like better. Brad Pitt, playing with triptychs, playing with the image a little bit, breaking it up. I recently shot some stuff for Black Panther for Disney. And this is one of our group shots. And group shots are always difficult because no one ever looks perfect in one image. So we had to do a little Photoshop in the end to get swap some heads. But I love this image because it really embodies the character of the movie. And everyone's so proud and statuesque and just looking heroic. So this is uh, one of my favorite images for this year. Hey. Some other single pictures. Oh, this is, this is actually Wakanda. So I actually went to Wakanda. I thought that was kind of funny. Another shot. This is the Entertainment Weekly cover. Then I shot him again at Comic-Con, just cool portraits of him playing around the whole cast. This is Wiz Kid. He's a rapper from Africa. Hey, Derek. He's the number one rapper right now coming out of Africa and Nigeria. We did his album cover. Another shot of Ava DuVernay. This one never made it. She didn't like this shot at first, but after I showed it to her when it was retouched and everything, she loved it. And I, this, was, this is my vision of the cover for Essence, but they used the other image I had. But uh, it's one of my favorites of her. I just love the light and the shadow play on the glasses. Another one of Brad Pitt. Simple light. Sometimes it's better just to be simple, classic light, rather than being so much like rim light and different things. Is it, it makes it so he, someone like Brad Pitt, he's so handsome and everyone knows who he is. You don't really need to do that much. You just need to put a beautiful light on him. This is G Kevin Hart. Just having a good time. Uh, this, is a, this is a picture I did with Oprah for uh, the life of Henrietta Lacks. This is uh, a, the poster for HBO. A little bit of Photoshop. We shot this 8x10. It's really beautiful to fall off in the, the lighting. I wrote, this is one of my favorites. This is Eve. Shot this in Palm Springs. This is, uh, it was like maybe 40 degrees outside. It looks like it's sunny. It was 40 degrees outside. And she was a trooper playing around. Kerry Washington. I love this little light. A little Matthew Jordan, Jordan Smith inspiration there. <laughs> Matthew and I go way back, so we always influence each other. This is Tiger Woods. I shot this for ESPN magazine. And sometimes with celebrities, you don't, you don't have a lot of time. Sometimes you have five minutes. Sometimes you have you know, an hour or all day. But with people like Tiger Woods or LeBron James or any of those people, you might have only 10 minutes to get a shot. And you have a lot writing on it. You have a magazine, you have an editorial staff, there's a lot of money behind it that people are counting on you to get. So, uh, but I always try to make a personal image for myself out of it. It's really important for you guys, when you're shooting professionally, you have your assignment in front of you. But it's also important for you to do something for your heart, for your soul, for your passion. 
I didn't enter photography to do this. I entered photography to make pictures, and I didn't know what I was going to do. And I ended up taking pictures of celebrities. But it's really important for you to do your own personal work within, within those confines of the commercial first weapon. So uh, Kendall Jenner, I did the Will I Am uh, earplug campaign. Like this picture. Another Will I Am. Sean. Uh, this is another shot I did for a magazine. We were shooting down in uh, Egypt, and I was so happy. I did this for free. I they're going to send me to Egypt. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to Egypt. Let's do a fashion campaign. And I always read about it my whole life. I love history. I love architecture. I love ancient culture. So for me going there, I wanted to push it a little bit and do something that was uh, iconic and represents who I am and who I want to see myself in my photographs. So I have this guy out there in the middle. This is in Luxor walking through the Temple of Luxor. I just love the morning light coming through, natural light. Then sometimes I do a lot of charity work as well. I shoot for charities. So I work for the Black AIDS, I used to work for the Black AIDS Institute, and they sent me down to South Africa to photograph Nelson Mandela. They called me on a Friday afternoon, and they say, uh, you want to photograph Nelson Mandela? I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. Is he, where is he in LA? And I didn't know he was going to be here. And they said, no, he's in South Africa. We have five minutes on Monday. Can you be there? And it's really important. I don't want to go into production and all that, but you just have to be able to go for it. And I, I had a lot of frequent flyer miles. I went for it. I flew my assistant out there. I had all these lights. It took me 35 hours to get there. And once I get there, they say to me, I say I got my lights in his office. And they go, we don't use lights. We, Mr. Mendeba, Mr. Mandela doesn't use uh, flash. And I had a small little window in his office. And I had only three minutes to shoot this. And we got this image out of it. Very nice. I do a lot of group shots as well. Um, this is one of my first famous big group shots of Oprah's Legends uh, Ball. And if you notice something, there's someone in this photograph. We had maybe 10 minutes to shoot this. Six month production. Just get in front of laser. But look who this is right here. You guys see that? It's Michelle Obama. And I actually met her there. Another group shot. I'll go back to that. Another group shot. We just did this one called A Great Day in uh, Hollywood for Netflix. This just came out this summer. But Michelle Obama came back on my radar. And I totally forgot that I photographed her for Legends. And Ebony Magazine asked me to go, we have a young senator who might be running for president. Can you photograph Barack Obama, Senator Barack Obama? And I said, sure. I didn't know that much about him. And that was my entry into politics. I'm from the DC area, but I never really photographed politicians. And this is our first shoot. And I was kind of reminiscing the Abaddon, Kennedy kind of photographs. I always do a lot of uh, research on photographs before I go into a shoot. Here's some of the shots. This is on the campaign. It's at the White House. And then I got asked to go to the White House. Made these shots of Michelle, one of Obama. Michelle again. So I'm going kind of quick to get through this. This is the last session I did at the White House for Essence Magazine. Look at that. So that's kind of who I am, kind of what I do. Then I got introduced to Nikon. And they asked me to shoot Ashton Kutcher with a a Nikon, and I say, yeah, cool, I can do that. Have fun with it. This is a Nikon One campaign. Some behind the scenes of uh, me working. And when you're dealing with celebrities and you're doing product shots with a camera and you have a major celebrity, there's always an issue with who's more important. So you have to find that balance between the product and the celebrity and make them both feel good. And that's, the, that's always a challenge when you're doing advertising with celebrities. Because it's always about them first, but then your product was hiring you. So you have to kind of figure out how to play that. So I always have a good time in my photo shoots, have some music, make the celebrity feel comfortable. Good. 
And here's some images from that campaign. I did three or four different Nikon campaigns. I love that one. His hair changes all the time. <laughs> I love that shot. I put this in here. I just shot the power campaign. And I totally forgot. I, you know, I was looking for images I shot with my Nikon and stuff like that. And this is one of them. This is with the 7200. This is uh, on top of a rooftop in the middle of Brooklyn on a cold winter day. And it just, they loved it. It just, it comes together. You see all the actors, 50 Cent, everyone walking. And this is, it was actually water on the ground. It's wet. I put a red gel in there, the whole nine yards, to light it. Denzel. Another shot from the William campaign. Shamar Moore shot this in Hawaii. These are all with pretty much a D800, D850, D810. I have all three, but I just upgraded everything to the D850, which is my favorite camera, by the way. <laughs> it's fun. Brad Pitt, another one. I just like the detail it picks up, the highlights and all that. It's really nice. Naomi Harris. Jaimin Hansu, this is in the desert. Love this shot. I started working for ESPN doing their body issue. And uh, they asked me to photograph Ezekiel Elliott. And they said, hey, we have this football player. And I'm like, OK, I've never done news before since I was in college. So it was kind of interesting. And I didn't know what to expect, so I tried to thought about different concepts and ended up doing this with the colors and different different boards, different gels. Another shot in the water. I love I love dealing with different elements: water, air, smoke. This is the cover. This is what came out for the cover. Then I got asked to shoot Greg Gorman and uh, Greg Norman. Sorry, Greg Gorman's trying for Greg Norman. And we did another shot. We used a D3 high-speed shutter because we were doing um, fast strobe. Another shoot I just did for Hollywood Reporter with LeBron James. This is my little sports section. This is this is the cover of Hollywood. Not the cover. The other co this was a cover of the Hollywood Reporter, but we tried to get this as the cover. But he really wanted to show his team. It was really important for him to show his team, which I respect. Because it is all about the team. All these images are not made by me alone. I have a group of people behind me that help me. You know, different people. You have Quentin over here worked with me before. Got where's Daryl over there, everybody. And another one. These are beautiful. I love this. This is one of my favorite portraits I've done this year. It's film, 8 by 10. And now, uh, going in more into video. So that's, just, that's about it. Sorry. They've had that in by accident. But thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I got it in five minutes left. Any questions? Yes. For what? When you have like those three minutes or five minutes with somebody, do you have your camera set up at a certain setting so you know you have that you say you have five minutes with Mandela, and he only used window lighting. You you, so you set your camera up. At well, a, I mean, you like have to really. Yeah. You know, after a while, when you're shooting a lot, you kind of can see things really quick. And I can walk into any room and figure out where I want to shoot because we all have our own eye, and we always gravitate. If you look at my images, I like things in the center. I like different types of color. I like matching color together. It just happens intrinsically. It's just something about who I am. I don't know, but. I, I have maybe one, I always have more than one camera, by the way. So maybe one is set up for that one shot that I know that my editor or someone might like, they're there working with me. Or I might, I might have another camera off to the side that's handheld because I don't want to be fixed. I want to move quickly. I'm very fluid when I'm shooting. Any other questions? Yeah, I noticed that uh, in the digital age, you still like to shoot with uh, large format and uh, <laughs> you, uh, medium format. And, uh, you know, you do your predominantly your personal work with that. Am I correct? Uh, I, 
Like you like to shoot with uh, large form. Yes, I, I am a Luddite. I really, I come from the film days. I went to RIT, so we, I fell in love with, I fell in love with, oh, okay. I fell in love with photography because of the dark room. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's because of the dark room. When I was in high school, I developed, I worked at labs, I did it all, and for me, the eight by 10 is just another extension of that. I love the, how the ground glass is, I love large format. It's something about looking at it upside down really helps me with the composition. And uh, I will always shoot it because it's just part of the passion and the craftsmanship. It's a different type of craft. So uh, not that digital is bad or anything. I like, I, they both, these are tools that we use. And each tool has a, a certain purpose. And eight by 10 is very expensive. Four by five is very expensive now. So you can't shoot as much. Yes. For, for those group shots, what camera were you using to get detail and all? Which the, one? The group shots. Uh, the the, the Bron James things. is Nikon. That's DA50. I just shot that with that. Other ones were uh, medium format. Um, maybe it's just my personality, but I'm just wondering how intimidated do you get in front of these actors and actresses? In front of who? In t like, it's, it would be very intimidating for me, like to take pictures of because I'm, you know, kind of starting uh, off. Like how in, or how do you break away from that? I, I'm more nervous around you guys oh, okay. <laughs> than I am about these guys. These guys are easy to deal with because they're so used to being pampered. I just be myself, but when I'm around you, I'm more nervous around you ready? crowds than this. And I don't know. Some of them can be intimidating. When I first started, I was very intimidated. Yeah, of she's course. Boy, she's but over the years, I got used to it. I understand how to deal with people better, you know. And it just comes across. You just have to be yourself because everyone's catering to these celebrities. So you have to go in there, be genuine, show them your heart, go in there full of inspiration, full of love, show them the passion that you have. And, it, and they, they connect with that. And they know you're an artist, your reputation does help. But I'm talking about that in my next lecture this afternoon. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, uh, for the Nikon 7200, 85, um, I don't use the 105 that much, but I sometimes use it. Those are my two favorite. Those are my, those are my go to lenses. Uh, Any other one questions? La one last question. Oh, we have one minute over left. There in the corner. And repeat that question if you ask. Right here? Where? Where? Uh, out in the back there. Oh, there you go. Just. I, I, can, I can't hear you very well. No. Let's no. do this the right way. There you go. Thanks. That's a great question, though. You want to repeat it so you can hear it? Yeah. Do you have a standard opening gambit that you use as a springboard to deal with these high-profile people as a way to start to get them into the mood to do your show? Uh, I think it's really... That's a great question he asks. Is there something that I do to get them in the mood? Uh, you, ha you, you have to understand that these people are busy. They have a lot of things going in their mind. So you have to break it down quickly. So when they walk in that room, it have to, the atmosphere has to be right. It could be the music. It could be the good food. It could be the energy of the crew, the set. Everything affects the, the talking. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I talk to them, but some people don't want to be talked to right away when they walk in the door. But I, I, you know, it's just a vibe that I give off in the set that helps him feel comfortable. That's all I can say. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, Baku, I mean, sorry, I, what, what about me as your inspiration? I oh, did oh. have a photograph of you in there. <laughs> what happened to it? You take it out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kwaku Olsen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're making a fast transition in this hour, so stick around. Now let me introduce to the Nikon Theater stage. She is ready to go. You guys, if you could slide that way. Tamara.